Hi everyone, Michael from Bullion Now, bullionnow.com.au. So welcome to another episode in our How to Invest in Gold series. And today we're going to look at that important question of storage. So you've made the decision you want to invest in a precious metal, or several precious metals. Um, you've actually possibly even secured some already. Now the question is, what do I do with it? How do I store it? Um, and there are, there are as many ways to store it as there are people in the world. Um, you should hear some of the uh, more creative options that we have suggested through the store here at times. But it's, it's, it's really good to see. Some of them are funny. Some of them um, you think, wow, that's a fantastic idea. Why didn't I ever think of that? Um, but all of them, all of them, all of them come back to one thing, and that is um, not telling anyone or telling very few people about where your stash is stored. And that doesn't mean if you've got it in the equivalent of a a Fort Knox type setup or whether you've got it buried in the backyard. If you tell no one other than possibly one other person in case you get hit by the proverbial bus, um, it's, that's your best form of security no matter what you're doing. Okay, so stepping away from that for a moment. So where do you want to store it? Question you need to ask first is how much am I storing? Am I storing one ounce of gold? Am I storing a ton of silver? because this will lead you down different garden paths. Now, you can store it at home. Okay, there's, there's nothing in, in Australia anyway, and as far as I'm aware, pretty much anywhere around the world, there's nothing illegal about you storing it at home. Um, you can store it, we have people that store it in their tea caddies, we have people that store it in you know, their sock drawer, we have people that store it um, you know, in, a, in a drawer in the back of their desk, all those normal sorts of things um, we have some unusual ones where they'll, you know, they might hide it in a washing line or something along those sort of things, but they're all around the same sort of line. All of these are really good places for you if you're just storing one or two ounces, that type of thing. Um, but obviously it becomes harder as you're storing more and more. Um, it also really does rely on you not telling anyone because those sorts of places are very easily accessible by other people. So bear in mind, you know, I can store it at home and, and um, it's a good cheap storage option and it means it's readily available for me if I need it, but it really does rely on me not telling anyone and anyone finding them. Now, if you're going to slightly larger amounts or you want slightly more secure storage, you can look at um, off-site facilities potentially. Now, an off-site facility does not necessarily mean a bullion dealer, those types of things, although it will include that. An off-site place can mean something as, and I always go back to a gentleman we had that sold back several hundred ounces of gold to us a long time ago. And he came in, he brought in a piece of PVC pipe with two little screw cap ends like you see the plumbers carry around all the time. And he'd sold houses, disappeared to another country, and he'd converted all that money into gold, and then he'd put it inside this cylinder and he'd buried it in a local um, park, a local, uh, it, it wasn't just a the park in the middle of town, it was a uh, like a state forest. He dug a hole in it underneath a specific tree. Now, I couldn't handle that. I was quite shocked at the fact that he'd done it, but he felt quite secure by having it there, knowing that it was in a state park and, you know, no change of regulation or anything like that or a sale of property would unearth it. Um, I don't know what he would have done if a tree had fallen over and the roots had exposed the, uh, the pipe, but um, it was there when he needed it a few years later. So you can go off-site in that way. But you can also go more mainstream off-site. So you're looking at um, bullion dealers uh, are an obvious one. There's also in Melbourne here, there's um, secure facilities that just really focus on storing precious items. That's their whole job. They're a, a private enterprise. Now the advantages of these types of places, and I'll come to banks in a minute, the advantages of these types of places is quite often they're very secure. Um, they have you know, full security systems, some of them will even have security guards or monitored security systems 24 hours a day. They will also quite often carry insurance at either no cost to you or very low cost to you. So that's always a good peace of mind. Once you start handing it over to other people though, um, other organisations, whether it be your bullion dealer or a secure facility, you are handing over a component of control. So they will tell you when you can and can't access it. They will tell you um, when or how you can access it in different times. Um, and I know for us, we have a secure storage facility as well. Um, we can't, we don't, and for good reason, we don't let anyone back into um, the back areas of our secure facility because we don't want anyone knowing 
you know, security systems, the types of vaults we carry, all those, all those, you know, basic information. So there's good reason why they're not allowing you back there, but the problem is they're not allowing you back there. So that limits your your options. The one that I haven't mentioned in all of that that's standing out is obviously the bank. Now you can absolutely you can store um, items in the bank in their lock boxes. We're finding that more and more banks are pulling out their locked boxes, particularly in regional and rural areas. Um, but a lot of our customers are getting into bullion because they're trying to step away from the banks. If you then buy your bullion to step away from the bank but store it in the bank, it kind of um, it kind of goes against what you've what you've tried to do. You're also very tied to, and you are with all those three options: the the secured um, facility, the bullion dealer, or the bank. You're very much tied to their trading hours. So you know banks will be closed for bank holidays. Um, I know there's been examples overseas. We haven't seen it in Australia so much, where banks have closed the doors. Actually, I tell a lie. We have seen that in Australia, but um, a few years ago now, where banks just close their doors, don't allow anyone access because of you know shutdowns or you know government um, announcements or anything along those sort of lines. So you are tied to that. I know one of the reasons we prided ourselves in staying open over that thing that we can't mention um, was because we wanted people to always have access to their, their stuff that they stored here, whereas some of the secure facilities, even the private ones, actually shut down over that period of time in Melbourne. Um, and that, again, caused another risk. So what you've got to understand with storage is you're, you're not necessarily removing the risk by storing it somewhere else. You're changing the risk. So instead of it being, I've got full control over it at home, but someone might steal it, you're now take, removing that problem. Okay, I don't have to worry about someone breaking in and stealing it, but now I have to worry about the fact that are they going to be open when I need it? Are they you know, as good as I think they are? And those types of questions get introduced. So um, what I'm leading to in this is, particularly once you start getting a few amounts out there, like a few dollars worth or a, or a few ounces or a few kilos of silver, that type of thing, one of the things that you can consider is actually spreading your location risk. So what I mean by that is actually storing some at home, maybe getting yourself a small safe or a large safe if you want at home. Again, don't tell anyone that you've got it, but have it stored at home. But take a component of it and store it somewhere else as well. And that way, if your home gets raided or whatever for any reason, um, you've still got that other facility that, that carries the other half of your gold. Or alternatively, if that facility shuts down, you've still got your ones at home. Location risk can keep spreading though. So, okay, I've got some stored at home and I've got some in my example. Um, you know, I live in Melbourne, I've got some stored at home, I've got some stored in Melbourne. Well, that's great until we have a lockdown in Melbourne. So maybe I should have some stored outside of Melbourne. And in fact, we have a facility not set up specifically for this, but coincidentally worked for us outside of the Melbourne area, and it allowed us to um, to have that option of operating outside of the Melbourne zone. You can also look at going interstate or even overseas at that point. So they're just some of the variations that you can look at. Again, I want to come back to the main point that I made right at the start. Your best security is not telling anyone, even your bullion dealer to a large degree, although your bullying dealer will have a lot of good suggestions about different safes you can use and different places. But always remember, don't tell anyone except for possibly one person you really trust just in case you get hit by that proverbial bus. All right, that's it for now. We'll talk again soon. I'm sure this is going to generate plenty of questions, so just list them below and we'll start working through them. Like, share, subscribe, all those good things, and we'll see you again soon.